Well, hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. So happy that you're here, that you decided to join us. I am excited to introduce to you Chris Lang from Livestreams Media. He is the producer of a new docudrama called um, Charmed by Darkness. And Chris has a lot to tell you about that. We're going to share some behind the scenes footage today. And we're going to talk about this film and why it's important. But I'll just take a quick second to introduce you to Chris who I had the privilege of going to Academy with for one year. And as um, life would have it and God, how God moves, we were brought back together um, later in life. We also went to college together at Southern. So, but he kind of went his way and I went mine. And um, Chris, you started out in finance and accounting and life took a turn. And what you do now is very different. So I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that and how absolutely how this has uh, how this whole story with Roger has impacted you um, in your life and why you have chosen to really bring forward his story and what we can break that down a little bit as we go. Well, thank you so much for having me, Stephanie. It's a, uh, it's an honor to be with you today. Thank you. Well, that's, um, how do I say that in 25 words or less stuff? Um, you know, it, it, most people, when they find out that I was a, a licensed CPA for 15 years, uh, th they're pretty, you know, they're, they're pretty discred, uh, you know, it's very incredulous for, for, for a personality like mine <laughs> to have, to have gone and learned how to count beans and do audits and stuff. And the truth is, um, God doesn't waste anything. You know, for people who are watching today, I would just like to start out by saying, you know, I praise God mm. that um, that as I look at my life and I see the way he's led me, um, I wouldn't trade anything stuff because I realized that if it wasn't for the finance background and the accounting background and the management background, um, there's a lot of things that as a ministry, we, would, we wouldn't have had the money to hire people to do certain things. Um, and, and also the ability to, um, to see that there's nothing wasted in God's economy. It's just given me a lot of confidence that he's going to carry uh, as long as we're faithful to the best of our ability, um, he's been opening doors all the way through this ministry. Um, maybe I could just give a brief summary, uh, Steph. I, I, do, I wasn't trained to do film. As you said, my background is in finance. I, my, I have two undergrad majors, uh, accounting and management. Uh, I got a master's in business administration and, the, uh, and, and kind of sort of carried that forward into my professional life. And uh, there was a point in my life when, um, when I went through uh, some some very difficult times, uh, very dark time in my life uh, about 15 years ago, and uh, and God used that broken place in my life, Stephanie, to actually um, bring me back into a ministry that was a media ministry as a as a volunteer for my local church. And, uh, and, and a talk show was born, and I was asked to be executive producer and, an, and a host for that show. It was called Hope on Fire. And we, we were on a TV network and radio network for a number of years, but then all the volunteers burned out and disappeared. And um, it was at that point in time when I felt like God was calling me to um, basically jump off the edge get rid of my small businesses that I had been managing mm -hmm. for a number of years and do ministry full time. And that's how Life Streams Media was born, this, this not-for-profit organization. Uh, we just had our 10th year. Uh, last year was our 10th year anniversary. I praise the Lord for that. Um, you know, and since that time, we've, we've produced five films. We, um, we, we've um, had, we've won some awards for some of these films, which also has been very affirming that the Lord has been leading and that people have been blessed by these films. And so what I want to say about Roger's story and about Roger's film kind of getting to the more, more current question, part of your question was several years ago, I was going through another crisis 
after Life Streams Media was born, and I was looking for hope. And one weekend, um, I was looking on videos on YouTube, and I ended up stumbling onto Roger Morneau's testimonies. And while I was watching these videos, I uh, was impressed by the Lord to start memorizing Scripture. And and I did. I started memorizing Scripture, and um, at first I thought it was impossible to do, and we're going to talk about this later, uh, because we, we actually had a whole ministry that was born out of this uh, later, but... But that was the beginning of sort of uh, Roger's ministry being on my radar screen. When I saw the videos of his backstory of his being a demon worshiper in the 1940s and, and his testimony of this young couple, Cyril and Cynthia Gross, who, who studied with him and risked their lives in the 40s that, so that he could escape from, from, his de- from the deception that had um, taken him into bondage and fear. Um, so I, I was impressed. Actually, our first film, Single Creek, had just come out. And, uh, and, and after that film came out and I saw Roger's testimony, I had read all of his books. Uh, and so I was really impressed, Stephanie. I was convicted to try to reach his estate to find out. Because I knew Roger had passed away, maybe for those who are watching. You know, Roger was a demon worshiper in the 40s. He studied the Bible with this couple in, the, in 1946 gave his heart to the Lord, and later in life he became a well-known author, a Christian author, and wrote books on his conversion story, you know, mm-hmm. on, on incredible answers to prayer. Um, it, was an, it was a huge prayer ministry that developed out of, his, um, out of his writing, and all of these stories came out of his prayer ministry. I have all of his so, books yeah, here. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, so powerful. There, she's ready. Yeah, and so... Many people who are watching have, have, have read his, his books, like I had read his books, and so I just had this conviction stuff that I, I wanted to know. I just wanted to know, has anyone asked the family for permission to do a film about Roger's life story and dramatize it and, and bring it to life for a new generation? And so I, uh, <laughs> I literally spent, I, I call this the film that almost never happened. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I actually started trying to reach out to the family through mutual friends. I, w- I was able to get phone numbers and stuff and Facebook addresses and things. And so I s- tried to reach out. And long story short, uh, two films later uh, and three years later, uh, I ended up talking to Roger's daughter, Linda, for the first time. And, it, and, and for those who are watching, I want them to understand something. Stephanie, I was literally at the end of my road. I, I, I had finished our third film at that point called About Miracles, and it had been released. And, and um, I really didn't see anything else that God had for me to do. I had been praying about my future. It, it For those who think this is glamorous, doing films, Christian films, <laughs> uh, it, if it was about the money, I can, I can assure you... <laughs> I would not, I would not have signed up for this. So uh, mm. it, it's because because I knew that God saved my life, Steph. God saved my life in my mother's womb. My mm. mother had a miscarriage, and my mother didn't even know she was still pregnant when she had a mis- miscarriage. Wow. She didn't know. She didn't know she had twins. Um, this was right before ultrasound was 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 uh, invented. So I'm dating myself a little, but that's okay. Um, and uh, and so she, but her stomach kept kept growing after her miscarriage, and her OB doctor um, dilated her cervix, went in with forceps, pulled out all the birth material he could to try to minimize the bleeding, and then he gave her the drug methogen. Many viewers know that drug is it was an early stage abortion drug that it was used to it contracts the uterus and forces everything out, and. Um, Nobody knew that, that there was another pregnancy in her womb at the time. Mm. And it's a long story, but there were a lot of reasons why I shouldn't have been born. Uh, and if I would have been born, I should have been missing arms and legs and mm. fingers and toes. Um, but but I, ha- I have, I have, I um, have wanted to serve the Lord my whole life, and I've done it very imperfectly. Uh, but I praise the Lord that he's allowed me to, uh, to pursue this. 
And, and, but so, so here I was after three years, finished about miracles, came back to the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't know what you want from me. Uh, I, as far as I knew, I, I was dusting off my resume stuff. I was getting ready to go back into the corporate life. Mm, I didn't and know that. so I, uh, yeah, I literally was dusting off my, my corporate resume because I still knew a lot of people in the healthcare industry because um, I hadn't been out of it that long. And, and so I just said, Lord, I, I, I don't know what you want for me. I, this is what I think I'm supposed to do. Um, and so I literally was, I, I was helping my brother build a house in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And before I left, he's a pastor. And so we prayed together and he prayed over my life. I'll never forget the prayer that he prayed. Stephanie, has anyone ever prayed for you in a way that you sense strongly that th they were yearning from their deepest soul to the Lord for you? Mm -hmm. That yes. was the kind of prayer that it was. It was that it was a deep, very deep. Uh, heartfelt prayer that that uh, that the that my brother was praying in my car before I drove off to to head back to Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, again, three years later, uh, it, on my way home, Steph, as, as God is my witness, my my cell phone rang. On my way home, about two hours later, and it was Linda. It was Roger's daughter. The first time that I spoke to her. Wow. And Direct so answer to prayer. I was so amazed. I pulled off the highway onto the emergency shoulder, and we talked for 30 minutes. That was our first conversation. And um, I, I, I just want to, to, again, redirect the viewers right now to the Lord. He knows your name. He knows your stress. He knows your dreams. He knows mm -hmm. what you're desiring in life. And you know what, Steph? It wasn't until I finished this film, Charmed by Darkness, and we're going to talk a lot about different things God did to help us complete this six-year-long journey. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing, Steph, before we dive into this, this is important. And this was really um, amazing when, when this hit me uh, literally a couple weeks ago. It's like the Lord was letting me know, uh, Chris, do you think you were ready in 2011 for this project? And the answer is unequivocally no. I was not prepared mm. for a project like this, Steph. Not, there weren't even technology tools that we used in the post-production of this film, much less the fact that, that technically speaking, the, the things that you learn in every film that you do, you're always learning. There was so much I didn't know. And guess what? There's a lot better filmmakers technically than I am. Um, and that's okay. Um, I had someone that I respect very much one day. He, we were coming out of the studio, and he said to me, Chris, he said, there are people that are a lot better hosts than you and me. He said, but the question is, where are they? And I thought about it. Mm -hmm. And Steph, you, I could say that to you right now. There's probably better hosts than you, but where are they? You have answered a call. God's called you to do this work. And I praise God for you because you're, go you're going out, stepping out in faith. And God can use someone um, who's willing and available. And so that, that's where I was, except God knew I wasn't ready yet to, 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 to take on this, this project. And you know what? Roger's story is too important. Roger's story is too sacred. Uh, not because Roger was sacred, but because of what God did in his life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The dynamic of Roger latching onto truth when he heard it and making life-changing choices that almost, that put him with a target on his back, literally. Mm -hmm. And also the couple, the couple that we're going to talk about, Cyril and Cynthia, that studied with him in the 40s. The devil tried to take their life many times after that. Um, and so, uh, but I knew I wasn't ready, not just tech. Technically stuff, but I ha I wasn't ready for a project like this spiritually yet either. Now I had started memorizing the Bible. We'll talk more about reciting scripture and memorizing the blessing that's become in my life later. But but uh, there's a, there was a certain um, there was a certain spiritual heaviness in this in this area that you and I work in, right? 
to, 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 to understand the devil's devices, not so that we can go down some rabbit hole, mm -hmm. but so, mm -hmm. so that we can learn, like Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he said, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Um, and then in Ephesians 5, the well-known verse, which I know Will shared with you a couple weeks ago, was that we are commanded to expose the darkness and that it is it is a shame that we should even have to talk about these things that yeah. are done in secret yes right yes so but i wasn't spiritually ready stuff and and and, and i don't think anyone is ever ready really but but mm -hmm. but i guess what i'm trying to say is the lord knows better than you or i do right when when he when the timing is right, and he may be actually preparing other people that aren't ready yet either. Um, and, and we're going to talk about a couple of these things. We're going to talk about how you and I reconnected. And maybe, well, maybe this is a good time to start segueing into the film Beware of Angels, which is connected to all of this. <clears throat> um, the, the, so, so I'm just so... So, so that that was an important point I just wanted to share before we get into the nuts and bolts and the meat of this conversation is just that uh, I realized uh, that God and his and his knowledge because the Bible says that his knowledge is unsearchable mm -hmm. his knowledge who was God's who was ever God's counselor whoever gave to him that he had to repay he is the one everything comes from him it goes through him and his all the glory in the universe goes back to him yes and uh and so because he infinitely knows about you and me and 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 how we can best uh, accomplish his purposes um it wasn't time and that was frustrating for me and i know there are other people who are watching today who are probably feeling desperate because they feel like god isn't answering their prayers but I just want to encourage you, whoever you are out there, if you have a prayer that you feel like God isn't listening to, first of all, search your own heart. Mm -hmm. You know, are you are you really surrendering stuff in your life that you're aware of and, and giving everything to him? And number two, um, God doesn't wear a wristwatch. Mm -hmm. and, and I know a lot of people don't wear these anymore. <laughs> they use their smartphones for a, for a clock, but, but God doesn't. God is outside of time and space. God, God doesn't have a calendar like we do. And so I just, I find so much encouragement as I look back over this, um, this dynamic. And so, so, so I talked with Linda there on that, that day in 2014. It was January 2014. And, uh, and, and we ended up doing a production agreement together between Rogers Estate and Livestreams Media. And we became fast friends. Um, and uh, one of the first things I did, Stephanie, is I read Roger's full manuscript, which was, a, the title was A Trip Into the Supernatural. And when I read it, it was so amazing. There's so many things that were left out of the book, A Trip Into the Supernatural. And mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was just amazing that God opened the door to actually publish the full manuscript which uh, was titled Charmed by Darkness, which is the title of this docudrama. And that was all the way the Lord helped us plan for it. But as I started interviewing people, I started interviewing people with similar stories, right? So that we could have contemporary witnesses. It's because Roger's story happened in the 1940s. Um, and, you know, there are people today who would say, how does a story that happened two generations ago really apply to us today? You know, and and so, you know, I was able to connect with a lot of the viewers will will know um, Mark Clemenson, uh, who was uh, grew up in a Freemason family uh, and ended up um, giving his heart to the Lord when he was in his young, early 20s and had a had a target on his back. They tried to take his life uh, in the secret society because he knew too much. Mm -hmm. um, today, today he's speaking all over the place, sharing his testimony about how God saved his life um, and showed him the truth about Jesus and the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had the privilege to connect with Will, Will Barron, who you interviewed for several weeks on your program. Um, and I was blessed to be able to um, interview him and reenact parts of his story. 
And there were some other stories that came together. And my idea stuff originally was that we were going to put Roger's story in a documentary with these other stories. And so maybe this would be a good time to show the Beware of Angels trailer. And then, uh, and then I can explain what happened while I was working on post-production for that film. Okay. Yeah. If if this is a good time for you. Oh yeah, no, it's it's <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I'm glad you shared what you did. It's really resonating with people. I see the responses, Chris. So I praise God for how He shared how your story is really touching the people, and and well, to thanks. encourage encourage all of us, you know. And I I understand about wanting to do something and God needing to prepare our hearts. You know, He's got healing to do. He's got these things. But it's not our time, it's his time, like you said. So, you know, be patient. He's going to use so many people as my encouragement to all of you who are Amen. who this is resonating with. So we're going to watch a trailer for Beware of Angels, and we're going to hear more of the story. They had prayed to see angels. No one knew that I was a disciple of the Ascended Master, Spirit Guide, Zhuo Ku. I could pierce that veil and see these spiritual beings that I thought were dead ancestors who have passed on and now have received these bodies. If it was too dark, I'm like, well, I don't do dark. And all those books made me feel good. Who do you serve? I said, no one. He said, no, nah, no, nah, everybody serves somebody. Now, who's it going to be? I said, well, myself, I guess. He said, so be it. There is really no escape because there is nowhere to escape to. I could see their faces because they weren't covered. What have I got myself into? Wow. <laughs> this is this had just come out when I reached out to you. And unknowingly, I was wondering what you were doing, and that's when I reached out to you. And I love the story, so thank you for sharing it. Wow. You know, um, when I was in the middle of putting all these stories together, Stephanie, I, I realized that there was no way that it would do Roger's story justice to try to force Roger's story in with all these other stories. Now, for those who don't know, um, and you just you picked up all of Roger's books a second ago, you might, uh, if you had the Beware of Angels book, maybe you could show it to people who aren't familiar with it. <clears throat> so, so this was the last book that Roger authored before he passed away in 1998. This book came out in 1997, and it features a story about a Bible study group that uh, were praying to talk to their guardian angels for a number of months, and eventually these shining angels started appearing to this group, and and they ended up involved in spiritualism and ultimately two sisters murdered someone else who was in the group uh, and one of the sisters is is serving a life sentence in uh, prison in Oregon and um, you know that's the feature story in the Beware of Angels that's why we titled it the same so it would match Roger's, Roger's book and then all of these other stories kinda came together so Roger appears in Beware of Angels as kind of as a spokesman because he actually went to that prison and interviewed uh, Sharon Halstead in prison uh, during his sort of journalistic uh, journey uh, in writing this book and and that's how he appears in the film kind of more as a you know a person who understands the supernatural because this is the world he came from before he met the truth about Jesus and the Bible right and so, but as I was working on this, even though Roger was already in it, I couldn't, I, I, I just felt this conviction, Stephanie, that there needed to be a separate documentary. Uh, rather than having a two hour long movie 
that would it would be too many storylines to try to force together. I just felt like it needed to be its own program. So that's why Charmed by Darkness kind of became its own title. And but but I wanted to get back to your comment because you said you had just seen Beware of Angels when it came out three years ago. It was in 2017, um, and maybe you. The, your viewers know that you authored a book and you were just coming out with this awesome book called Silence No More. Thanks, Chris, for that plug. <laughs> it was, yeah, and that's when I reached out to you uh, to see, because I was looking for some credible uh, re resources from my website, where to drive people to truth, right? And that's when I reached out to you and I saw Beware of Angels trailer that you had just finished. And it was it was interesting timing because, mm. you know, here we were promoting this new film uh, and then my friend Stephanie Griffin, who I knew from, uh, you know, from years before uh, and then out of the blue, as we were talking, um, you, you told me about your book. Um, and of course, I was honored that you wanted to put a link on your website. Uh, but then you said, oh, by the way, my husband knew Roger Morneau. And uh, it, it was almost like, a, a, it, as I recall, it was almost like you were just kind of slipping that in toward the end of our conversation. And, and I didn't let that thing go, did I? No, you didn't. <laughs> it, was like, it was like right at the end of our conversation. I'm like, oh, yeah, Dottie met Roger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. And then the conversation began all over again. <laughs> <laughs> So you sent me documented proof. You sent me a picture that you scanned of, Ro yeah. of, of Dondi with Roger and Hilda. Mm -hmm. You sent me copies of the notes he took the first day he, that he knocked on Roger's yeah. door and Hilda's door. I've got them here. Do you happen to have those? <laughs> I do. I didn't know if you wanted them, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. I should have had them out. Sorry for the noise. So yeah, oh, he okay. spent like five hours. This is the address, and then like five yeah. hours, and he he took a lot of notes, um, more than this even, and a picture. Oh, that's oh boy, it's oh here it is. They're in the book. He has all all Roger's books, and they're all signed and um, by Roger, yeah. sent to him. Yeah. And there's a picture of the printer? Yeah. And then them oh, together. There's a picture of them together. Yeah. Yeah. Dondi with Roger and Hilda. Yeah. That's fantastic. These are um, treasures when I saw for Dondi. Yeah. When, when I saw that stuff, I was just like, wow. You know, here's the thing. When Roger died, he had over 25,000 prayer requests. Uh, when people people were reading books all over the world, they were contacting him from everywhere and sending him letters asking him to pray for them. And when Roger passed away, all of those prayer requests, since they were confidential, the family took them, put it, put him, put them in storage containers, and had them destroyed to protect the confidentiality of these letters. Um, there was no journal. There was no backup. I had no idea how to find anyone who Roger had prayed for mm. and who had experienced miracles in their lives. And you can't imagine how many times I prayed to the Lord. Lord, you know who they are. You know where they are. And you just happened to marry one, Stephanie. <laughs> one, of those, <laughs> yeah. one of those most amazing storylines that is actually, it, it's actually so supernatural because the way that Dondi met Roger you learn about it in the film, of course. That's we did all the reenactments and stuff, and people can see how how Dondi was in a bad place in his life. How he was looking for hope, and how he was a party animal in the life of the party, and how he just wanted a big house and a fancy car, and that was all he. But he was empty inside, and that was a storyline stuff that is that is so germane to so many people in the world, right? And since this pandemic has hit, I think mm. a lot of people have been awakened to this giant hole in their hearts. Don't you think? I do. I do. People are searching now more and, than ever. And Dondi's story so beautifully illustrates this giant hole. 
Doesn't matter how big your house is. Your, how, is. Doesn't matter how nice your car is or how new it is. You know, it doesn't matter how famous you are. Increasingly, celebrities are taking their lives. I think people see that happening mm-hmm. and they wonder, okay, well, once you climb the mountain and you realize you're on the top of the mountain and you, and you, and you still have this giant hole and you realize you can't fix it. And so, you know, that's Donnie's story. It's so beautiful how, how, how Roger invites him into his own house and, and the evidence that, that Don, you and Donnie have kept, the evidence to, to show the people in the film, these pictures and these documents you just showed on, on camera just now, um, and the way, that, um, the way that God led us to the couple in Montreal. While I was up in Montreal filming uh, actual locations, uh, and by the way, Cynthia and Cyril were the only ones who remembered or actually Cynthia was the only one who remembered their exact street address in Montreal, where they lived when they studied the Bible with Roger in 1946, when mm-hmm. he gave his heart to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I, I, I think the theme of this whole time together today, Stephanie, I have this, this um, it's the sense of God's timing. God's timing is always perfect. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. knows. He knows the end from the beginning. And do you know, Stephanie, and I don't know if you have access to pictures with Cyril there in your um, slideshow, but if you do, I'm going to share a little bit about, about Cyril and Cynthia. Um, <clears throat> when, I was, when I was in Montreal, there was a couple, actually, that, that Roger had prayed for, and we got to include that story in the film. And so, um, again, um, you know, being able to connect with Cyril and Cynthia when they were still living. And they were almost 90 years old. And, um, and when I, sorry? No, it might take me a minute. I'll flip through some pictures, but go ahead. You talk and I'll share. So, so it was right before I went to Montreal when I was talking to Cyril and Cynthia on the phone and Cynthia said, this was our street address. And she literally gave it to me and I wrote it down. And so when I was there in Montreal, I was, act- I was actually able to go to the actual address where they lived, and I was able to take pi- pictures. Um, so, um, but I wanted to share this, Steph, that when I, when I, when I had that uh, four and a half hour interview with them in their home, what, what, what nobody could have known. It, it, what the family couldn't have known, because Cynthia wasn't dealing with any kind of, you know, notable chronic conditions, even though they were both almost 90. Uh, she died suddenly on, on New Year's Eve, uh, on uh, December 31, 2014, just three months after I interviewed them. Mm. And uh, when you talk about, again, God's timing, the, the, you know, that... All of these years, I was trying to get in touch with the family, these three years that passed by. The year that I actually got started on the project and started getting details and researching and all of this stuff, Cynthia was still around. Cynthia was the detail person in the couple. She, she mm-hmm. remembered addresses and numbers and things. Cyril remen- remembered big picture stuff. Cyril remembered a lot of, a, a, a lot of the... the, the the storylines and stuff and he was kind of the spokesperson i guess for the two of them but she was like sharp as a tack she could remember the the small little details and that was a very important one she also remembered the street address for the church they attended when Mm. the same exact building that you see in the film if it wasn't for cynthia we wouldn't have known the location of their apartment where they studied with roger um, uh, it, where the devil tried to kill them, where the fire broke out in that apartment, uh, and and the church location, and uh, which I was able to go in and film uh, footage inside that actual church. So, um, but that was a dynamic, and that I'll never forget is becoming close friends with Cyril and Cynthia. Um, and after Cynthia died, Cyril actually gave two more interviews on camera, um, and. Um, he was so courageous, you know, both of them were so courageous stuff. They, they, they were always ready to tell the story hmm. of how God used them when they were at a coming of age. See, that's the cool thing about this story stuff is it's not a, an infomercial for a denomination. 
it's not about trying to, right. you know, present Seventh Day Adventist Church. If you don't join, become part of a label. You know, you're 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 going to be left out of the remnant. You know, right. it. What's important that people see when they learn this story is that Cyril wasn't a baptized Seventh Day Adventist yet. Cyril was still a Sunday Protestant, and Cyril didn't believe in the Sabbath. Cyril didn't believe in the devil. He didn't believe the devil was even real. And there are so many storylines related to Cyril's sort of trans, transform, transformation. It's, it's, a, it's a story that's bigger than just Roger. You know, it's a story also of Cyril's transformation and the way God protected Cynthia. When Cynthia accepted this, 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 <laughs> this man from the factory who, who Cyril barely had just met that day in the factory, and invited him, you know, Roger wanted to have Bible studies that, that very night when he learned that Cyril was a Christian. And I just found it fascinating that Cynthia had the courage to invite this stranger into her house when she knew he was a smoker. Mm -hmm. And she was terribly allergic to cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were only 21. You know, 20, 20 years old. Roger yeah. was 21. And they were 20. And um, and so that, to me, the, the coming of age story, you know, it, it's it's not old people; it's young people who are right at the, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Right at the beginning of their stories being written, and um, and to me, that's what part of the compelling nature of having the privilege to work on this, and ultimately, God leading us to young adult actors who actually portray. Mm -hmm these young people in the film uh, back in the 40s, uh, it, it, it ended up being far more, actually, yeah. stuff than, than I could have dreamed. And I think that that speaks to, no matter our age or spiritual maturity, if we are even new Christians and we desire to serve God, we step out in faith. They stepped out in faith, and God moved. And it, it was the the domino effect to change the lives of others so quickly and even now these days so we we should never be shy to to step out and do something for god he gives us all that we need he gives us the, the holy spirit so we just have to trust and you know um when they found out that Roger had been, what Roger had been up to, he, he actually, we show this in the film, but this actually happened. And what people, what will surprise people actually, Steph, is the way that we tell Roger's story in the film is largely, is largely through the witnesses of Cyril and Cynthia's own eyes. You know, it's what they witnessed mm -hmm. because they were, they were, they were there and they saw you know, and uh, the evidence that he really had been a Satan worshiper. And this is something that, you know, there are, there are, there are, you know, skeptics out there in the world today, right? And if you can't Google it and find your proof, then it must not be true. Mm. But um, God helped us find evidence for a bunch of other things in Roger's story that we found out were true. And these were other epic kinds of pieces of Roger's story that no one had ever found any evidence. Even the family had never seen mm -hmm. his army, his army file, his merchant navy file from World War II, and how God saved his life at a time when Roger hated God because actually he he rejected religion. His childhood religion was grew up in a Catholic family and rejected his childhood religion as a young person. And during the war, he hated the God that he thought he knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the ways that God protected his life were astounding. And God helped us find unbelievable evidence that he was telling the truth about these things that happened to him in the war. Uh, and so, so getting back to these, you know, this, this, the, 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 you know the, the credibility for eyes to see and ears to hear, right? The, the people who have honest minds and honest hearts it's you see Cyril and Cynthia, right? You see them telling in the in this film what they saw when this stranger comes to their place, and you you, you start to hear them describe what they were experiencing that first night, especially. 
But yesterday when we were talking stuff, you, uh, something happened that was Holy Spirit driven. That was a new revelation to me, and it was so exciting. If people are looking for for proof that Roger really w- really was in a secret society of Luciferian worshipers, all they need to ask themselves is one question. Is this not the most strange Bible study you have ever heard about in your life? Why would a young person, 21 years old, who has all, you know, Every night he could have gone to a club, he could have gone to, you know, bowling alley, he could have gone to a movie, but he wants to come spend four hours a night studying the Bible at a stranger's apartment. Why would a 21-year-old be so, obviously what they, what Cyril and Cynthia witnessed was a man who looked like there was no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He had a certain look in his eye that was mm-hmm. so steely up. A fearful look. Uh, uh, he, they actually said he looked evil the first night. That it was they were praying for protection that first yeah. night. You know, he was in spiritual crisis when he came. He was. He was desperate to know, to have his doubt removed. You know. And the very the very context of the of the delivery of this story, Stephanie, for. From the very beginning, it was the 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 the, the context is a Bible study. It's where you see these three people sitting in a room, but you're constantly going places in the film. You're not just staying in that Bible study room. You know, you're 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 having flashbacks to World War II. You're having a flashback to Roger's childhood, where there's actual footage of the town he grew up in. You, you know, actual documents from World War II and exciting footage of actual war footage where where you find out that Roger served his country in Canada. Um, and so you're not just sitting in this Bible study room, but, but here's the thing that struck me yesterday. As you said, if you take away Roger's motivation, then you take away the devil. Because Roger, Roger was so motivated to learn about the other side of this conflict because he had heard in the secret society, right? That Satan had really been kicked out of heaven Mm -hmm. and that he was an enemy of Christ. That's what, that's what they believed in this group that Lucifer is the good guy Mm -hmm. and God is the bad guy. And when he found out Cyril was a Christian, he was curious and that curiosity drove him because he was supposed to actually, he was actually supposed, supposed to be initiated that very week into that secret society and the and the priest the satanic priest mm-hmm. was pressuring him you know that week and and when he met Cyril at the factory he suddenly just had this uh this sense that it's now or never and he saw the difference in Cyril when he would get upset or things would happen versus the people he had surrounded himself with and had been exposed to mostly well since he left home so there was, there was something about Cyril's life that was speaking to him, I think, to really cause doubt in what he was about to do, and he just had to know. So, yes, in that Bible study, I mean, I'm grateful that they spent those four hours a night with him for, <laughs> for what, a week? Almost a week. So. Yeah, and I mean, the transformation that you see in the film, it's so amazing how God did this, because yeah. you see Cyril's transformation. Cyril goes, Cyril goes to Roger's apartment one night with his gun. Cyril has actually got a licensed weapon that he's carrying, because this was a dangerous time in the 1940s. The mm-hmm. unions were very, the unions were beating people up, and Cyril was afraid because he was a foreman at his factory. And so for all of these reasons, you see this... Um, this, this recognition that this great battle, this unseen battle, it's not just about Roger. It's not just about mm-hmm. Cyril. This, when you watch this film, I want the viewers to understand something, Steph. When, when you see this, it's not, this Roger's story is not about Roger. It's a microcosm of all of us. All of us are in this great battle. Mm-hmm. And, and we have an opportunity to make a choice. And, and I think that, um, you know, Cyril and Cynthia told me, they said, you know, 
we tried to tell this story for many years, but no pastors would let us tell it publicly on uh, at the, in the pulpit. When we left, uh, when we left mm-hmm. Canada and came to the United States for many years in New York, in in California, it took 20 years until anyone would let them speak about this story because some people are listening today and they say, "Oh, we don't want to hear about the devil." Yeah, as though he doesn't exist. And if we don't understand how the devil works, um, that we we also don't understand then the true power of God. So we we cheat ourselves and others by not sharing the true nature of Christ. I mean, of Satan. We have to sh- we have to expose and teach um, while uplifting the God of the Bible and His goodness and His mercy and His power. We lose context if we don't talk about one and only talk about God. So, and Amen. what what hope is the person who is who is in someone uh, like Roger's position in life, or someone who maybe not be exposed to that picture of darkness that Roger was involved with, but some other form of darkness that may not appear so dark. You know, so we have to share all of this so that people can then hopefully identify something of maybe where they might be and come out and give them hope that they can come out and be safe and develop and cultivate a powerful prayer life and walk with God to glorify Him and to help others come out as well. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, on that note, time is really slipping away. <laughs> shall, we show, <laughs> shall we show the trailer for Charmed by Darkness and then come back? I don't have a picture of Cynthia and Cyril. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, those are the ones I could okay. not get to, to transition over. So, no problem. All right, we'll play the trailer and come back. This man is connected with the guy above, and he want to talk to her and pray for her. Roger ministered to thousands I know of, maybe million. I wanted to know what he knew and why his prayers were so powerful. Does the author of this book live here? There's power in Roger's story. There's something that doesn't want me to continue typing this. Welcome to our home. Thank you. How were the scriptures given? As we read the questions and looked at the scriptures, he never blinked. The sweat was pouring from his face. And I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, just trying something. Better pray. This is a weird situation we're in. I still was not a believer in the devil. Those aren't spirits. They're union workers. I know just how to handle those type of people. Now, if you'd like to talk and I can show pictures of Amanda and Dondi and that sort of thing, I can start scrolling. Or do you just want to talk for a couple minutes and then I can show? What no, would that's you like? fine. Um, however, however you'd like to do it. I, I just would like to share a, a little tidbit that viewers <clears throat> wouldn't know from any, any other source about Amanda, this young blonde that you see in the trailer. Um, she actually typed the manuscript for this book that became published um, as the book Charmed by Darkness. And the full manuscript was too faded for, to actually scan it and get, to get a digital copy of the book. So we hire her to type it. Well, 
she had been asking God about the Bible Sabbath two weeks before we hired her. And she, uh, she when she started typing this book, Charm by Dark, which became published as Charm by Darkness, um, she was convicted to start keeping the Sabbath. And what you see in the movie is what happened to her on that first on that first Saturday. But the part that you don't learn about in the movie, Steph, uh, is, is is really amazing. And that is that I actually hired two other people online on this freelancing website. By the way, we had never met Amanda before. She, we met on this, we connected on this freelancing website. Well, we had hired two people before her to type this manuscript. And uh, both of them disappeared, mysteriously disappeared on us. Uh, one of them actually did say she had a family emergency and couldn't finish the project and just unplugged. And the other one agreed to a price and then just didn't do anything uh, and didn't respond to any messages. And so I, mm. I remember falling on my knees stuff and asking the Lord, listen, <laughs> um, this is your story. Lord, if you want this to be published, you got to find someone who's going to finish this. Um, and, and Amanda was the third person that God had in mind. And Amanda didn't just finish typing it. But she actually was the one who had been praying to the Lord about the Sabbath. And God, God had Amanda in mind the whole time. And when you see the movie, you will understand that she is actually the bridge between this old story that happened in 1946 and today's generation. Because what happened to her, we did the reenactments in the film. And there are witnesses that saw what happened on that first Saturday because the devil hates the Sabbath. The devil knows that it's one of the two institutions that God gave in creation week. There was marriage and mm -hmm. there was Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Those are the institutions God gave mankind before there was sin. And the devil has hated those two things more than anything since the dawn of time. And, and so when you see the movie, you understand um, that the devil isn't just afraid of Roger's story, but he's afraid that people will actually learn the beauty of truth and how quickly that God can move when yes. someone decides to hold on to it. It's so true. It's so true. And yeah, it's just she she I love her story and and the viewers will see it when they watch the documentary the docudrama, but um, she it was truly meant for her to have that script and and just how everything fell into place when we pray god provides and we never know how it's going to come so we just have to be open you know and be willing to step out she was willing to, she was willing to step out and something of that manuscript resonated with her that she prayed that she would be able to get it and then you never heard from the person the second person who uh, who did take it so then God answered her prayer to get this manuscript to be able to work on it. And then all the pieces started falling into place, answering both people's prayers. And, and that's right. That's a good, that's a good addition because you, you and Amanda are personal friends now, which mm -hmm. I think is really cool. Um, you know, ministry, minist working for God can bring people of like minds together. And uh, I, I have... That's been one of the greatest blessings uh, for me to be able to witness friendships develop uh, through this ministry of serving the Lord together. Uh, and, and you're like family, and I think yes. that's so cool. It's true. There's uh, an instant bond and a connection. And one thing for sure is we all know how to pray for one another. And so when we need prayer, we reach out to one another and uh, it's just we're able to go right there and I love how God grows the family while he's revealing truth so there's nothing Amen. he can't do so I have a still of, yeah that's oh, go ahead no I think that's that's so so true um, and um, one of the one of the really amazing things too about God's timing is that Amanda did did finish the book. It did get published in 2015, mm -hmm. and uh, and actually, um, I had this this conviction that her story needed to be in this program about Roger's story, and we we had originally 
she had originally agreed to do an interview back in 2015 when the book came out. And for some reason, it didn't work out at the time. God's timing. And, and three years later, <laughs> in 2018, the Lord worked it out for her to actually give an interview and for mm-hmm. her to actually get her, her friend who, who she was with that day when yes. literally, literally all hell broke loose that day. And her friend Carrie was there and saw it. And actually, Carrie gave an interview for the for the film as well mm-hmm. as a witness. Mm-hmm. So God worked it all out, Steph. He did. He did. His his delay is only to make things more solidified, I think. So I'm going to show a picture of Dondi, I think, here, when you guys were working together. This yes. Was, this was after know, the party. Uh, yeah, we. This this is a little behind the scenes, uh, so the viewers can see. Um, my friend Mark Payton, by the way, I want to thank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to thank all the technical people who joined alongside of me during this marathon journey. Um, Omar Torres, who worked with me in Orlando to do the reenactments, the medical reenactments for this amazing story toward the end of the movie. Mark Payton flew out to California uh, for a long weekend, um, mm-hmm. a grind, a, mm-hmm. literally a grind. Yeah. Uh, that we weren't just filming Gandhi's story, but your viewers know your story, Stephanie. Your viewers know that you wrote a book about coming out of spiritual formation. Uh, th- this amazing, um, c- courageous sharing to the world of, of this nine year journey that God brought you out of. Uh, because God knew that you were deceived. God knew you had an honest mind. Mm. God knew that you desired to, to live in the truth. God knew all those things about you. He knows and our he heart. Was, and he, he did not fail you. He did and not. And so uh, we were going to include, some people may wonder, well, I thought you were going to put Stephanie's story in Charmed by Darkness. And this is another one of God's things, because I was in the middle of editing Charmed by Darkness, and I could not see, I did not have peace in my heart as I prayed about how all these storylines would fit together, that it would do your story justice, or Rogers, actually, to try and force yours into the mm-hmm. storylines that are actually part of Rogers' legacy. And, and, and but what God gave us is a very clear bridge to the next film. And the, the, the next film that actually during that weekend that Mark Payton was with me in Southern California, we didn't just film Dondi's story, mm-hmm. that picture you just showed of Mark uh, filming with the camera behind Dondi, but we also filmed your story and did reenactments of your story. And, and you worked so hard getting church members who volunteered to play certain roles and as extras. It was an amazing experience. God worked out so many logistics. I like to tell he people... Did. You know, that was the most complicated uh, set of a uh, shot list that I've ever been a part of. And to, to pull off your stories, and we had 15 different scenes to reenact, 15 different scenes, plus, uh, plus your two interviews. And uh, I don't know how, but God worked it out. And, he did. Um, when you sent that I, list, I, I thought, what in the world? I've never seen one of these, and how do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> but God, God showed us, and you brought everybody who needed to be part of the project, and everybody was excited about it, still are. They're always asking, what's going on? What's the latest? They're excited to get their DVDs, the people Dondi works with. And so, yeah, it was. It's, it's fun to look back and see just how God moved, you know. And, you know, seeing the way Charmed by Darkness, the life and legacy of Roger Morneau, to see how that film actually, the final cut, how it came together, and how Dondi, and this, this is kind of the punchline, when I mentioned that God gave us a bridge to the next story, which will, have, will, which will feature your story and stuff, and that, that's Dondi's story. Dondi appears in Charmed by Darkness, not just as someone who became a confidant, a close friend of Roger before Roger passed away. But also, Roger taught Dondi the biblical model of prayer. Mm-hmm. It, it, the true biblical model of approaching God in, in heaven through the blood of Christ, through the ministry of Christ, interceding for his people on earth. Roger 
prayed powerfully for people. That's why he had over 25,000 people send mm-hmm. him letters from around every corner of the earth because they, they, they were reading his books that included these incredible answers to prayer. And, and that, that was a piece that, that God showed Dondi through Roger's testimony. And, and, um, and, and what's, um, what, what's going to be so cool about this next film, Stephanie, is that most viewers will find it hard to believe that Dondi ended up marrying someone who was involved in, in the journey <laughs> you were in and how God worked it out for you guys to become part of the same team. Yes, that's true. Only God could do that. <laughs> Only God. That's right. And so, so Dondi, so Dondi will also be in this next film. We 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 filmed reenactments that include you and Dondi in in both like together in some of the scenes, so that parts of Dondi's interview included questions about about the journey you were on, and as your at first your boyfriend and then your husband, and how his journey eventually intersected with yours, and you became a team. Um, and I just I, I believe it's going to be a powerful witness stuff um, because it literally it's a different kind of a theme I like to tell people I, I I feel confident that God has shown me Roger's story needed to be on its own it needed to be story driven mm-hmm. it needed to be um, it needed to not get too much into doctrine although there the, the Sabbath is there very clearly the state of the dead is there but it's not a it's not a Bible study you mm-hmm. know it but for those who wonder, well, why did you talk about Beware of Angels earlier in our conversation? Well, the reason is because it be, they're companions to each other. Mm-hmm. They're literally they're literally interchanged. They're like hand and glove together. And they go, why? Well, because there's a theme that flows throughout all of Beware of Angels. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Please go review it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the whole point of it there is to unmask the different ways that the devil packages the deception of the immortality of the soul mm-hmm. uh, through aliens, through departed loved ones, through the Virgin Mary, through uh, angels from heaven, like this book, Beware of Angels, mm-hmm. uh, pointed out a, tr- a very true murder case. So um, God worked all of that out to present the, the deception of the immortality of the soul, Roger's story, Charmed by Darkness, his life and legacy, and not just his, you know, coming out of, of pure demon worship, but also this incredible prayer ministry that came out of how God mm-hmm. led this man who was so grateful mm-hmm. for being led out of the darkness, right? Um, and then this third film that we're talking about that involves your story, I like to tell people my conviction is this is how this is how paganism this is how paganism has entered into the Christian church. And how spiritualism is now wearing a Christian jacket, mm-hmm. and this this the, the, this next film is going to is going to have some teachable moments in it. It's going to have to be specific about historical, uh, you know, connecting the dots of how how did we get here in the Christian world mm-hmm. to where we're centering down and self self hypnotizing ourselves, and we're calling that prayer, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I know you and Will talked about, right, how contemplative prayer is nothing more than repackaged transcendental meditation. Right, yeah. Yeah, self-hypnosis. So, uh, so, yeah, Roger's, because Roger had seen the dark side, he knew as a Christian how to pray against Satan's tactics. I think, and he knew he he was hiding scripture in his heart, right? So, when we claim God's word over our situations, then that's powerful. God is way more powerful, and he had insight on how to pray against things. So, we have to be careful how we pray, no matter how it's brought to us as biblical prayer because there is a form of biblical prayer that might feel good but has no power and in these days like we're living in right now we need to have those powers that are those prayers that are power filled we need to see God we need to experience that part of God 
his power, his word, his faithfulness. Amen. Yeah, the Bible says, come let us reason together. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't say it doesn't say center down and let your meditation be an empty brain with no thoughts in it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's not what meditation, biblically speaking, means. Uh, meditation is actually um, focusing on God's word and processing what it means to you and asking the Lord to teach you mm-hmm. how to apply it. How do I apply these? These are timeless, eternal truths. And one of the goals in the film, Charmed by Darkness stuff, by the way, when when we open the film, the voiceover says, what's so relevant about a story that happened two generations ago? Uh, it says, um, after all, Satan isn't real, and the Bible is just a bunch of fairy tales, right? Mm-hmm. And, the, and the rest of the film is all about trying to answer those two questions with credible witness. Um, and, and I think that that's why just the fact that a man would, would be so desperate to want to have four hours a night of Bible studies mm-hmm. because his, his life literally was in danger. A- anyone who's honestly asking them the question, have you ever heard of a Bible study like this ever before in your life? And most likely you haven't. And the reason is because this man knew the devil was real. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, and as you said yesterday, Steph, he had a motivation, and his motivation was clear. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this God that he prayed to after he was delivered from this powerful force, I mean, they tried to kill Roger throughout the rest of his adult life many mm-hmm. different times. The devil tried to take him out, but... Um, Roger didn't fear because every morning, every morning, he committed his life to the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And um, he committed himself under the, he called it the sacred blood shed on Calvary. You know, he had a a respect, Steph, that very few Christians have for the, the blood that was shed on Calvary that actually doesn't just cover sin, but it washes, it cleanses, Mm -hmm. it cleans you up. Yes. It makes you a new man inside, a new woman inside. There's transformative power in that blood. Mm-hmm. You know, and Roger Roger lived it. He lived that life and he prayed for people with that context and that's what I believe. That's why the Lord heard his prayers, I believe, because he had a respect for what that sacrifice meant mm-hmm. for the whole world. Mhm. There was a definite change in Roger from when he was um, not a Christian to after he became a Christian and what God did in his life. And the more scripture he hid in his heart, just like the Bible says, I hid, hide my word in the heart that I may not sin against thee. And so it has a cleansing effect. That blood, the words um, that, that, that we hide in our heart, God's words. And so... My former prayer that I did for those years had no cleansing effect, that sanctification piece. And so that's just another piece of Roger's story that needs to be, and you did this so well, to be shown the difference that Scripture, that God's Word makes in our life. It cleanses us. It accepts us where we are. He loves us, but He never leaves us where we are. He changes okay. us to to become more like him. So, yeah, the, the scripture do you, is very do important. You, do you actually have um, the video, the behind the scenes video of the cigarette? I do. You want to show thing? That? Um, I, think that, I think that that helps to give context to what we're talking about. Okay. You know, the, the dynamic of Roger's cigarette addiction and how God helped him, uh, they actually helped him get victory over it. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's the clip. I have never touched a cigarette in my life. I've never burned one. Now we have herbal cigarettes in here on the set, just like they use in Hollywood, because they don't, Hollywood doesn't let you use real cigarettes anymore because of the unions and stuff. It's like breathing in campfire smoke. Who doesn't like inhaling campfire smoke? I mean, that's, especially if you're downwind and it's all coming right in your face. 
None of us smoke cigarettes, even the person who's playing Roger. Since we're asking him to fake it, I have to try it so that I can direct him to try to make it look real. This is what they used in the 40s, and it's still popular today, the Zippo lighter. So if you draw it into your mouth, but you don't inhale it, you can make it look like you're exhaling. I would not recommend anyone to start this habit. Okay, now that burned my eyes. So next time you go camping and inhale campfire smoke, remember the set of Charm by Darkness and hopefully it'll make you smile. <laughs> For those out there in the world who do smoke cigarettes, I want them to see the miracle that God worked in Roger's life. People who have integrity, who are dealing with addictions of all kinds, can be inspired to give the God of the Bible, the God of Roger Morneau, um, a chance to show that he's real. That was Roger before. Yeah. I, you know, I felt like the cigarette was a, was a powerful symbol, Steph, of what we were just talking about. The first of all, the behind the scenes logistics of trying to pull off this this period, you know, the the scene to make it look like it was in the forties with the props and all of the different pieces. But for me, the cigarette piece, obviously having never been a smoker myself, and the fact that the young the guy who played young Roger had never ever touched a cigarette before, um, you know, God God had to be involved in helping us pull that off in some way. Um, I'm sure that people who have been smokers for many years know that we're not smokers and they can tell, but the point I'm making is just that for me, I hope that smokers and everyone else, if they know that it's not real, <laughs> will, will keep in mind the point of it all, you know, is first of all, to be authentic. That's where Roger was, right? Roger was a Roger was a chain smoker at 21, at, mm -hmm. at the age of 21. He had already been smoking for years at that mm -hmm. point. And for him to, uh, at that first Saturday, uh, when Cyril got baptized, he went to church with them, and he went like all afternoon without lighting up and got a terrible headache, and then he lit up that night. And on his way home, he had this conviction that he, that he needed deliverance from this. And he just had this this rising conviction that he should test this faith in this mm. in this Christ, mm -hmm. this Savior, that he had been been taught to think about in different ways than he heard about when he was a child, right? This was a whole different kind of God than he had heard about when he was a child. This the the, the learning about this, you know, learning of the truth about death, learning about hell and about purgatory and all of these things that are actually not biblical at all the the uh, but but learning that Jesus had come and had shed his blood so that he could deliver us not just in not not like you said accepting us as we are but also then taking us down this journey together hand in hand with mm -hmm. this elder brother mm -hmm. right the, the uh, Hebrews chapter 2 actually calls Jesus our brother and that Jesus himself is not ashamed to call himself our brother. Mm -hmm. And so Roger learned this about Jesus, his elder brother. And so he went home that night and he took out his cartons of cigarettes and put his Bible open to Matthew 27. That's why Matthew 27 became such a critical, pivotal, uh, it was the theme for Roger's life. His mm -hmm. whole life, after he became a Christian that week of seven days of Bible studies, when he gave his heart to Jesus, this, this deliverance from cigarette addiction, overnight, he prayed over this, left his Bible open to the crucifixion chapter, and for him it was not a ritual, right? For him it was not like an, it, it was not some kind of a, a, a thing that, that a pagan would do. He was actually believing by faith that the blood of Christ was over his cigarettes. And he prayed for deliverance that night, mm -hmm. and he and he and he poured his cigarettes into the toilet and flushed them down mm -hmm. the toilet. That, wow! And he never touched a cigarette 
again after that night. And I just, I just felt like that was such a, a powerful symbol in the life of Roger that, uh, first of all, gives you this starting point stuff, the starting point where Roger learned that the God of the Bible actually listens to our prayers. Mm-hmm. When we pray with the, when we pray under the blood mm-hmm. of Jesus, right? Yes. And um, praying according to God's will, that God doesn't want us to be in bondage to addiction, and that Jesus specializes in hopeless cases. So uh, I hope that that story in the film resonates with some people who are mm-hmm. struggling with things right now, whatever addiction might be. Doesn't matter. People are addicted to overeating. Yeah. People are addicted to purging and be, and anorexia. People are did. There's a long list. We all know what they are. Um, and even for those that are so socially acceptable things, um, in our heart of hearts, we know what those things are, and the Holy Spirit can reveal even more if mm-hmm. we're not aware. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I have I have prayed that this this symbol of, of Rogers, um, not just the cigarette deliverance, but also the context of Matthew 27, the crucifixion chapter. And that's actually, you know, kind of getting into the Irish site and mm-hmm. the, the part of maybe uh, if you have the clip of Linda talking about his memorization, I think that would be very interesting for people. Yes. Thank you. I was going to take us there. Um, this is something he, he did every day. He recited this one every day. Um, because he knew that his safety was in jeopardy if he didn't cover himself with the blood of Jesus every day. Amen. So here we go. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So growing up with my dad, he was just memorizing constantly. And we would get in my dad's car at, during a time period before post-it notes, and there would be there's these index cards with scotch tape taped everywhere or little um, pieces of note p- papers taped everywhere. I mean, we're not talking about one. And on all of these little post, these um, index cards and little note pieces were Bible scriptures that he was memorizing. So he was constantly, because he was driving a lot on the road, and it gave him time to be memorizing the Bible. What I remember of him my whole life, and to, to the day he, he passed away, he was still memorizing. He remembered it up here, but it also pulled his emotions, you know what I mean? It, it meant something to him. He wasn't just quoting it, just to quote it. And he kind of contributes it back to the time when his mom had him memorizing the catechism. He said that, you know, that's what conditioned his mind to be able to do that. I feel the Lord just really blessed him with that gift. Raja was very deliberate about memorizing scripture. You know, he created his own system before there were really systems in place. We have things at our fingertips now. We can buy scripture memory cards. We can, you know, we can have post-it notes that we can write things on. There are so many ways um, we can do this. But the question is, do we know our need? You know, it's... um, That's really the key starting point. uh, Yeah. You know, uh, I think the question, the question, you know, in this pandemic, when when the whole world got shut down, uh, I don't think anybody could have imagined how quickly that Mm -hmm. life could change Mm -hmm. for everybody. Uh, And, you know, the one thing having having been because of Roger's testimony about memorizing scripture, Stephanie, the last eight years of my life, it's been part of my devotional journey. Um, And I praise the Lord for for the way that the Lord used Roger's testimony to speak to my heart, because at this time in history, especially the last couple of months, um, the, the, the belief in my heart and the, the conviction and in the reality, right, that this word 
in this book is eternal. It doesn't change. Mm -hmm. It's forever because it's inspired by the eternal deity that has always been and always will be. And, and by the way, who became one of us um, so that he could save us from ourselves and save us from fallen angels and save us from the influence that surrounds us every day. Um, I praise the Lord for the eternal foundation that we can, that we can find on this, in this word because um, even though Jesus doesn't specify every detail of how things are going to go down at the end, there's enough detail in this Bible that we, we Christians believe this is an absolute word, you know, mm. and, and, and in this time in history for me, um, having, having lived this lifestyle for a number of years now and having seen how the Lord has come into my life stuff and taken things out of my life that I struggled with for a number of years prior to starting to memorize, because what happens when you memorize scripture is you're actually forcing other things out of your mind. Um, and and it, it did start as a force of the will for me. Mm. It's not like I said, yippee. In mm -hmm. fact, I remember, <laughs> I remember the, when, when I felt the conviction come over me the first time, I remember saying to the Lord, are you kidding me? 30 verses? Because that's what Roger called the power chapter, the power mm. passage. 20, Matthew 27, verses 24 through 54 is 30 verses. From Pilate's Judgment Hall all the way to, to Jesus expiring on the cross to the centurion saying, truly this was the Son of God. That whole scene, that you uh, that you learn in the 30 verses, I was just like, there's no way. Uh, it, to me, it seemed impossible at first. But I said, okay, and I kind of, it's kind of like you're being drug, dragged along on a leash, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, but, but after a couple weeks, I found that my mind was starting to, to see the words on the page, and um, and that began a journey, Steph. I went, those first 30 verses became almost 1,500 Bible verses in the last eight years. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this to people, not as a, as a pat on my back, but as a way to encourage the viewer today. If you feel like something's missing in your life, uh, um, it, or, or if, 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 you're, if your idea of God or Christianity has gotten stale, um, Believe me, the, the word will it will surprise you if you invest mm -hmm. yourself part of five minutes a morning. If you just do five minutes every morning and start with that, you'll be amazed if you keep up with it for ninety days. Not not just how many scripture verses you'll memorize. That's not the point. The point isn't memorizing just words. Mm -hmm. Anybody can memorize Shakespeare, right? Anyone can memorize movie scripts. And, 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 and ask yourself, how many movie lines do you remember from your life, mm. from, from, from movies you saw 10, 20 years ago? Yeah. You know, your brain remembers a lot of stuff, and the devil wants you to think that memorizing the Bible is not only impossible, but will be the most boring thing you've ever done in your life. Mm. And so most people don't even start. But it's not, just, it's not just that you find the Lord coming into your brain and actually showing you things and teaching you things that you never heard a pastor ever say before, which is really quite astounding to me in, in this journey. But secondly, Steph, it's the, it's the doors that open, the timely word for someone else in season mm -hmm. when they're in need, when they're in crisis. And if I could, I'd like to share one thing. I, I don't know how we're doing on time. I'm not but worried I, about time. <laughs> I appreciate your time, so thank you. Well, one of the things that ha that people may wonder about is, you know, did you have a, a, a target on your back? Did you go through attacks? And the truth mm. is, I, I did experience several significant things, but I'm going to jump over those things and go to the most significant attack that happened just last fall, the, the, the week we were going to announce the pre-release screening. Um, the one who invested the most in this in this film, Charmed by Darkness, was my father. And my father um, fell off of a ladder when he was changing out some batteries in a smoke detector, a smoke alarm detector in his in his home where my parents were living in Chattanooga. And he hit his head and had multiple brain injury 
uh, bleeding in the brain, and, and it was it was untreatable, and he died a week later. Um, but here's what happened. Um, not only did the Lord show up in that crisis unmistakably, and I and I could spend an at the next hour describing how, but I just want to share one insight of how God used the word that that was in my heart in a, in that crisis to to minister healing to my own heart and to my family members who were surrounding his hospice bed because my dad was discharged from the neuro ICU to hospice and and they brought a bed to my brother's house there and the whole family was camping out there as mm. as dad was slowly slowly dying there over a period of days and but one day while I was there with my family around his bed stuff um, we knew he was going to die soon. His, his breathing was getting shorter. He hadn't spoken at all um, for over 24 hours at that point. Um, but God impressed me to lean over his ear because he was hard of hearing at that point and start, start reciting scripture in my dad's ear. And one of the scriptures God put on my heart to speak out loud so that my family could hear it as well as I was speaking it into my dad's ear was Psalm 121. It's a, it's a short psalm, but um, it's powerful, and it's beautiful, and it's personal. Um, and uh, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil. He will preserve your soul. The Lord will preserve your going out and your coming in from this, from this time forth and forever. Mm -hmm. You know, and there were some other things, but but after I finished that stuff, I, I, I stood up. You know, I kind of leaned up away from Dad's ear, and um, again, Dad hadn't said anything for over a day at that point, uh, and and you you don't know how much someone who's dying will actually hear, right? That you're mm -hmm. sharing or saying. Or right. hear. And a few seconds later, he said this one word, and this this the Holy Spirit reminded me and you'll you'll get it immediately for those who have been involved in this film pro project they'll get this immediately um dad said one word and it was very clear it wasn't even just mumbled it it it, it, it was beautiful and for those who knew roger and for those who watched the film you will see young roger saying that word beautiful as an expletive out of pure joy mm -hmm. it was something it was something that was um that became kind of a an inside word that dad and i would say to each other when we would talk on the phone during these last few years mm -hmm. and i just realized the lord was blessing me and my whole family by the way when when dad said beautiful i looked at all of my siblings and my mom and their eyes were really big and tears filled our eyes mm -hmm. and it was it it, it was such a beautiful moment of healing for all of us to know that dad was okay, mm -hmm. to know that he was at peace, even though his brain was bleeding inside. You know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. That, like that, that the Holy Spirit used the scripture and came in and allowed dad to, to react in a way that could let us know he was, he was okay. Mm -hmm. And, and that we could be at peace. That that God God's going to take care of, of Dad's future. That Dad is safe in Jesus, mm -hmm. and uh, and for the rest of us, right? That God's not going to fail you. That the Scripture says. My favorite Scripture is is that uh, the Lord, your God, He's the one who goes with you. He will not fail you, nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. This is the personal God. The Bible teaches us about a personal God. And because of reciting, memorizing scripture can save your life. Mm. Because when the when the rest of the world is 
going on and changing by the day. Now it's changing by the hour, isn't it? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even the hour sometimes is too long. <laughs> minute by minute. Oh. So yeah, I but God's word never changes. That. So that, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I guess that's why I wanted to share that, that one experience for viewers to help, I guess, illustrate um, in a moment of crisis how the word can just come out. If, you, if you've invested yourself mm-hmm. in a journey with the Lord and his word, the Holy Spirit can bring words out mm-hmm. at a time when other people need healing, too. Not just yourself. Right, yeah. But I loved how you were speaking those words to bless your dad, and he in turn, God used him to bless his family. So Mm -hmm. his word does not return into him void. So it's life, it's life giving. And that he could use one of Roger's words. Yes. (laughs) Yes. That was a very subtle little thing my dad I was like the Lord I think the Lord was smiling because you know what we have eternity we're going to have eternity with Jesus and our loved ones and um, that that is just so encouraging to me Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 helping people also who are watching our films especially beware of angels and charmed by darkness to help them understand the truth about death so that they know without without question that our God is a rational God, mm-hmm. He's a loving God, and and it, quite frankly, it does not. It would it would not at all comfort me, Steph, if I believed my father was alive in heaven, looking down on the tr- trouble that I'm going through, mm-hmm. or my my mother is going through without him now. Mm-hmm. But but you know when Jesus taught very clearly that death is asleep. Um, and that, you know, there's going to be a trumpet sound, and there will be two resurrections. Mm. There will be one for the righteous mm-hmm. and one for the righteous. Um, and uh, the Bible teaches when those times are. The first resurrection is at the second coming, and the second resurrection happens after the millennium, when all the wicked are raised from the dead. So it's, um, it's a beautiful truth, um, and it's having just lost my dad and then the pandemic hit and it, it's been surreal for me mm-hmm. you know it, yeah but but the fact that we just finished this film literally stuff i mean we finished the final cut of charm by darkness just days before this this economy was shut down here in the united states um and um people can ask themselves or ask the question well that's just lucky <laughs> mm. you know um, God's timing did, once again. The, 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 there you go. Yeah. That the, the theme of this whole conversation, right, is how God's timing is so perfect. He's always on time. There is a message in this film, in Roger's story, for today's generation. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's really, you know, I think the last thing we wanted to share today is just the way God has opened a door to, to get it on Amazon Prime and the yes. way that doors are opening to to get it out there to the world and there's a lot of work to do but miracles have been happening stuff to Mm -hmm. to give this to give this film some track you know so that it can start to move toward the world um and uh by god's grace um inspire people to want to study the bible for themselves and Mm -hmm. not just listen to a pastor or watch a youtube video right yeah yeah i appreciate you sharing something so fresh chris but what you shared is inspiring just like you said it's very personal and it's inspiring and it's it's touching hearts out there um and and making an impact so appreciate your your sharing that um i would like to show this website for irisite.org um yeah. so people who might be interested in learning to memorize scripture i'll show a quick picture of that and then I'll take us to Amazon Prime to encourage people to go watch your film and and give it a rating because as you say your goal is to get this out there not to recognize a financial benefit from this but to teach people and then the added benefit is the more ratings it gets on free platforms is that what you shared with me earlier yeah, I mean, the ultimate goal 
I think people need to understand today when we show the, the appeal video, there's just a short video to help people understand the opportunity that we have together. You know, I, we could have never made it this far without people who believe in Roger's story, right? Who've been blessed by his story, by his ministry. There are, there are millions of people who have been touched by his life story. And, and by God's grace, we need to reach all of those people. And here's, here's the point. As you said, it's not about the money. Mm-hmm. It's not about a recognition and, and all of those things. It's about trying to get this story, this incredible, actually this incredible set of stories that flow together uh, that all have this similar connection to Roger's legacy um, to as many platforms as possible. Because one of the things that's happening, Steph, in this culture that we're in and this economy that we're in, is some people may not realize that what's happening is the big companies are just getting bigger. And they're getting bigger overnight. Mm. Um, and I don't have to I don't have to name names, but I will say this: the platform Amazon is in- increasingly large, and the larger you get, the more you can censor what you don't like. Um, and uh, and we've had some experiences with Beware of Angels. If you go and look at the move at the movie reviews on Beware of Angels, and I hope the viewers will go and watch Beware of Angels as well. Mm-hmm. On, on Amazon Prime because if you go read the reviews you will see people either love it or they hate it there's no middle ground it's it's about the message mm-hmm. and um, and that's okay you know we know not everybody is going to accept this this message that is being given through story um, but Charm by Darkness is is, a, is, a, is is an even more it's a more um, uh, co- committed effort to use the story to draw people in and and um, and try to present to them these truths that we believe as as seventh day Adventist Christians, but not to force them to the point where where we say you have to become part of a club mm-hmm. you know or you don't or you don't belong it's not mm-hmm. about that mm-hmm. it, it's about le- it's about learning what the Bible teaches that's what we want people to hear is through these stories to say, hey, maybe I missed something. Maybe yeah. this book real maybe this book really isn't maybe this book really is relevant to today. And um, and give it another chance. You know, may, maybe religion failed them when they were kids, just mm-hmm. like it did for Roger. Mm-hmm. It failed Roger too. Mm-hmm. But it's not because his parents were bad people. Right. His parents loved God. His parents loved God and they did the best they could and and I think that's another point that comes out in the film, which only God could do, is we didn't want to point fingers at another religion and say, that's a bad religion. It's not about that either. You know, um, if, if people live up to the things that they know, that they've learned, God doesn't hold them accountable for things that they don't know or haven't learned yet. Right. And, um, and so, um, so all that being said, our point in talking about Amazon Prime today, it's exciting to be able to talk about it because Charm by Darkness just got released, not just in, uh, in the United States and in the United Kingdom, but also on primevideo.com on um, Australia, Canada, France, Spain, Latin America, a bunch of countries on Prime Video. And this is an unprecedented release on Amazon. But again, this is a starting point, and 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 for those who understand that this story includes elements of a worldview that are not very popular today, for you to go out and speak about an absolute truth, mm-hmm. see 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 Stephanie, you you get this. People people can talk about Jesus, and they and they know they can't get rid of the historical Jesus in history. So they have to make space for this historical Jesus. But this, ex- this historical Jesus cannot be your savior. This historical Jesus cannot be the savior of the world and the king of heaven and the creator of heaven and earth. He cannot be an absolute truth, mm-hmm. right? But Jesus himself in the Bible said himself, I am the way, the truth. I am the truth, I am the life. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through, through me. me. And, and, and there are increasingly Christians today, Steph, who accept this, this ecumenical idea that, you know, Gandhi and Buddha and H- Hindu practices and all of these things just sort of synchronize together. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and all of these roads lead to heaven. 
And that's why this next film that will feature your story is so important in this journey of expressing to people that this, even Charmed by Darkness, presents this absolute truth that Jesus Christ is, is the Savior of the world. And you can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, Jesus is just one of many great prophets. You can't say that. He's no. either who he said he was, or he's the greatest liar that ever lived. Mm -hmm. He can't just be some great prophet or good teacher. Yep. So that's what comes through in, in Charmed by Darkness. And so it's, it's really in the film's best interest. And for purposes of ministry, for any Christian who's watching this today, we need your help. We need your help to go and watch and review on Amazon, wherever you live, whatever country you're watching on. If you're in Australia, please log in to primevideo.com, watch it and review it. Get your friends and family to come do it who, uh, so that um, we can get traction. And the reason we need this traction stuff, here's the reason, because these free platforms that you mentioned a few minutes ago, they're, our ultimate goal is to get Charmed by Darkness on platforms that are free with ads so that as Christian filmmakers, we can offer these for free to people to mm -hmm. watch anywhere in the world. That's our goal. But but these platforms are highly curated stuff. And for the viewers that are watching who, uh, who may not understand, Amazon is a starting point. It's not the goal. Mm -hmm. And all of these other platforms who are out there that we're trying to get the movie on, they're going to look and see what our numbers are on Amazon for this film. They're going to want to see how many views there are. They want to look at the reviews and see how positive they are or bad they are. Um, and so it's it's views and reviews. This next 30 days is crucial for us, literally. Um, and, and so please, uh, those of you who are watching, um, if you if you know about Roger's story, if, if maybe you didn't, but you've been listening today and you've been impressed, go watch it for yourself. And if, if it impresses you, please, please engage your friends mm -hmm. and family. Uh, Please leave a review. The, re the re every review matters. Yes, well said. Yes, so I will show the I recite video. I mean the website for people to find you. And so it's irecite.org, and um, below this you will see all about how it got started and and how to start your own. Should you be interested? Yeah, and this is actually, yeah, uh, Steph, I'm glad you pulled that up. Um, th this actually was born out of the inspiration to begin uh, memorizing scripture, which was inspired, uh, as I mentioned, through Roger's uh, legacy. And uh, and now we have, we, we are promoting I Recite actually as a part of the release of Charmed by Darkness, believe it or not. When you come to the movie page at charmedbydarkness.com, you'll see a link to this to this page to I Recite, and um, and you know what stuff? It's really exciting. There are already people from around the world who are landing on this I Recite page from the movie page, mm -hmm. clicking through, and mm -hmm. they're finding the you know they're downloading handouts, they're downloading tips for the journey, these these um, recommendations on how to get started memorizing the scriptures and starting your own group so it's very exciting to see this um you know this ministry that sort of came out of roger's legacy um growing as it is i think he'd be particularly excited you know i yes. think it's wonderful that you integrated that into your ministry so i'm going to take us to the amazon um how to Oh, it's Amazon Appeal, and it's going to show us how to leave a review once you watch. You know, after years of work, we finally finished this film, just days before COVID-19 shut the U.S. economy down. Coincidence? Not for those with eyes to see and ears to hear. We believe that Jesus is coming soon, and now you can help us spread this message. Here's how. Charmed by Darkness is now free to watch in the U.S. and U.K. with Amazon Prime membership and in many other countries on primevideo.com. Its potential to expand beyond Amazon, including free options, will depend on its number of views and reviews during these next two weeks.
So I'm asking you, please watch the film on Amazon, leave a review, and invite your friends and family to do the same. Because every review matters. Please help us spread one of the most compelling conversion stories of the 20th century, the story of Roger Morneau. Okay. I hope everybody who's watching today or watches um, in the future will go and rate this. Watch it and rate it. You will be blessed just to see it and it will impact your life and maybe even encourage you to start scripture memorization yourself. Chris, I want to thank you for your time. I, I quit watching the clock. I just felt like this is important. <laughs> it needs to get out there and people can watch in bits if they want. Um, but you are a busy man and you have a lot of things on your plate. So I didn't want to steal one of your, another one of your Sundays. So thank you for what you're no, doing. No. And God bless you. It's, I appreciate everything. Would you like to pray for you, the Scott. viewers? Uh, I'd be honored. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, for this privilege to be um, sharing with Stephanie today, with Stephanie Griffin Ministries, Lord. Um, I pray for the people that are watching today, um, that are coming from different worldviews, um, having their own specific challenges and desires and pains. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that your Holy Spirit will, will reach down and touch in a very personal way the people that have been watching who are convicted, um, maybe they've left uh, Christianity because uh, of hypocrites or failure of some kind or, or uh, for whatever reason, Father, and I pray that your Holy Spirit will lead them back to your word and help them see that it is indeed a living word mm -hmm. that uh, you have breathed into our culture for every generation uh, and especially for this time in history, Father so that we can know that your words don't change and that you never change. And so, Father, we praise you during this time of unprecedented panic and stress around the world. And I pray for your people, especially right now, mm -hmm. that uh, your spirit will strengthen them and give them a confidence in you and in your word that our future is guaranteed, Father. It's mm -hmm. guaranteed because of what your son, Jesus Christ, did for us. 2,000 years ago. And so, Father, we thank you for the blood that he shed on the cross and for the guarantee that it's offered to each one of us when we believe in his name as our Lord and Savior. So, God, please bless each one that's been watching today and keep us in your care because we know you're coming again soon. Mm -hmm. We pray mm -hmm. this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, Chris. Thank you. And thank you to thank the you. viewers. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Until then, take care, God bless, and be safe. Okay. Bye, Chris. Bye.